All right, Steve, NASCAR and NBC, a ton to talk about after a Chase Elliott win from an action-packed Texas Motor Speedway. Let's get into Chase Elliott first. Obviously, a very popular win. Uh, he had to earn it. Fans loved it. What did you see? Well, you mentioned a popular win, uh, and he had to earn it. And he had to earn it for a lot more than just at Texas. Remember, this is his longest career streak of not winning since he has won in the Cup Series. Now 19 times he's gone to victory lane. And, and really, Jeff, in my mind, while I was a bit surprised he was on this winless streak, what I have to really give them credit for is Chase and Alan Gustafson. It's really easy to kind of look and find excuses internally or make a reason. This organization never did it, right? I think Chase even mentioned in his post-race media that his biggest supporter was Alan. Um, and I've had both public and private conversations with Alan, and not one time did he ever mention Chase as being an issue or Chase needed to work on. It was always we, the whole organization, the group. And I think that says a lot about this nine car. You know how tough it is to win on Sunday. And you wonder now that this is behind them, um, what kind of momentum it creates. I mean, it almost, I won't say first win, but you could tell it was more than just another win. Yeah, I Steve, I agree with you 100%. I think a lot of things going on with this nine car, uh, emotionally watching William Byron and the success that they've had. Uh, you know, they've been just lighting it up this year. Uh, it's a teammate. You do not want to get outdone by your teammate. Uh, the speed that Kyle Larson has had, you do not want to get outdone by your teammate. And then, you know, since the injury, uh, you know, they haven't been able to win. And, and that, was a, that was a major blow to their year last year. It was hard to build momentum. It was hard to get themselves back in the hunt because they weren't racing every week and other people were. This, build, this gives them something uh, to build on with all the things that you just talked about. It's one thing to say, hey, we're a team. We're sticking together. We believe in each other. It's a whole other thing to put it down on the racetrack and see results. And I think it, it came at a very, very important time for Chase Elliott and this team because when you're at Hendrick Motorsports, results matter. And when your teammates are having it, you have to be having it. So I think the timing of it uh, is really important. And, and I want to say one thing. I was, I was at the racetrack. You know, typically, Steve, when we leave the tower or we leave wherever we are, if we leave early, fans are piling out. That didn't happen yesterday. I, I, I thought, did I miss something? Did, 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 are they restarting this thing again? Because nobody was leaving the, the grandstands. It was They all stayed to watch him on the front straightaway they watched him they wanted to see his burnout they wanted to see him get out of the car and there was tons of energy at the racetrack and it was it was fun to see uh, the fans just wanting to experience it with him I, I i just i thought that was a really really cool experience for it was a cool experience for me and and i know it was a cool experience for the fans that stuck around you know and other than a uh, i'll say a good pit decision and a little bit of a timely yellow in stage one the nine car just has speed and why i think that matters is chase has been vocal about how he said in his own words he had to learn to drive this next gen car differently than he drove the older version of the nascar stock car i don't know what he felt that specific thing was i wouldn't expect for him to kind of give away those secrets but as you can see right here a three wide pass for the lead you know this nine car was up front most of the day. I think that's another thing to kind of put in your notebook. It wasn't just a win. While all wins are important and all wins matter, it was a win on a day that they kind of were up front most of the day. I think that makes a difference for the nine. Yeah, I do too. Steve, you talked about the, the move. Let's go back and we'll break down how he actually won this race. You know, final restart, uh, so important to run well during the race to get yourself into position. But here he is in position. Uh, Ross Chastain, extremely aggressive on the outside. Brad Keselowski, you know he's wanting to win in the worst way. And, you know, Chase does a good job with the restart and then just locks it on the bottom, is able to throttle up and, and keep this position. I think the big part here is look behind him. There's no one pushing either one of them. I think that that was an advantage to Chase Elliott. Had somebody been with the one car on the, straight, on the back straightaway, they could have pushed him into a better position. But them clearing that second lane, you see, was a major part in how Chase Elliott won this race. He made it look easy, even though it wasn't. And I think that's the key for the nine car. You mentioned it, no help down the back stretch. And then once he cleared the one, uh, the one actually gets up out of the groove, contact with the 24, the wreck behind them. But the nine had it won back to the line either way. Um, you know, the race in general was a lot like the last restarts, which was chaotic. It had a little bit of everything. It had strategy. It had untimely yellows, depending on which driver you were cheering for. 
Um, we saw mistakes. We saw wheels literally fall off cars. It had everything. You know, Texas, something about Texas. Uh, you and I talked about this. You know, I wonder if they don't have more of a, you know, kind of an identity issue than a racing issue. Because when people talk about Texas, they talk about how, oh, another mile and a half. And they do it with such a demeanor like they expect a boring race. And yet we saw 16 yellows, and this isn't a standalone. This is what Texas has turned into. You've won here. What makes Texas so tough? Well, so Steve, I, I agree with you. There, there's the racing at Texas. You know, there's a conversation about the racing at Texas is no good. They need to blow it up. They need to change this. No, they don't. It, it has gotten to, in the last few years, the racing has been really good. And, and if I was a race fan, I'd be watching what was at Texas Motor Speedway, and I'd be like, give me some more of that. Like, it's fun to watch. It's hard for the drivers. And I, I think that's what fans like to see. You saw some of the best drivers that a sport has to offer, you know, making mistakes. You saw guys running into each other. You saw a lot of action. You saw tons of lead changes. That's what this racetrack has become. And, you know, it, it, it's fun to watch. And, I mean, I, look, I hate seeing people wreck race cars, but that's part of racing, right? Battle for the lead, three wides. Chase Elliott, the way he got the lead, that was making a three-wide aggressive move. Texas has become a really, really fun racetrack. And the perception of Texas doesn't match the reality of Texas Motor Speedway. Marcus Smith, don't change anything. Like, just, you know, just find a way to show the fans that Texas has been great racing because it has been. They really don't need to change anything in my eyes. Let's remind the fans, though, this will be the one shot at Texas. So if you loved what you saw at Texas, you have to buy a ticket for next year. It's no longer in the playoffs. So what have we learned um, eight or nine weeks into the season, we've seen William Byron win multiple times, Denny Hamlin. Uh, Denny was in position again at Texas. Now it's Chase Elliott with a breakthrough. Give me, I'm not going to say a grade, but give me an expectation. From now, maybe through the Coca-Cola 600, which will end the month of May, do you expect to see more of the same? Or is the team? Is there a team out there you think that's on the horizon? Uh, I, look, I expect to see more of the same, but I, but what we've seen the last two years is that you have to get hot in the playoffs, right? And so teams that are building momentum now, there's someone lurking in the background that's not running as well as you would like to see them running right now that quite possibly could win the championship. Uh, Tyler Reddick's a great example. He was absolutely flying yesterday when he had the lead. He had that outside lane working. I mean, at one point, he was going into three, and the guy in third was coming off of two. I mean, he was absolutely flying. And, uh, you know, that team, that team could break through – uh, we've seen Penske win the last two championships, and no one predicted going into the last six or eight races that they would be the ones winning the championship. So my prediction and what I think we will see is there are some teams that are sleeping that are going to find what they need when they need to, and that's in the playoffs. Who that is, I have no idea, which is what makes this season and er the last few seasons we've seen in NASCAR so much fun. I got a lot of focus around that cut line. I know it's a long time from the playoffs, but when you think about Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, Brad Kozlowski, three former champs that are right there around the 16th place heading to Talladega, and you look behind them, there are cars that I think can go down to Talladega and win, which could upset this entire thing. So storylines aplenty. And, you know, we talk that it's a long time from the playoffs, but you and I, we know what's being talked about in those shops and in those conference rooms, and no one – wants to wait until the end of the summer to try to find their way into the playoffs. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports and NBC YouTube channel.